I'm going to read from a script now. So Great. Uh, please bear with me. So as a preliminary matter, this is Jenny Raitt, the Director of Planning and Community Development for the Town of Arlington. Permit me to confirm that all members are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan. Diane. You might need to turn that up, change your volume. Uh, Dan Dunn. Yep. Christopher Potter. Here. Tony Sacco. Sarah Lee. Yep. Okay, thank you. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine. Uh, here, and you, you need to hit record, Jenny. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. Pausing for a moment, please. Bear with me. Okay. This meeting is being recorded. Excellent. We got that. Um, and Aaron's work out. Hi. Hi. Excellent. So, good morning, everybody. This open meeting of the CDBG subcommittee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020. Due to the current state of the emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access, access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless, unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will allow public comment at the start of the meeting. I will provide instructions for that portion of the agenda momentarily. For this meeting, the Town of Arlington Select Board sub CDBG Subcommittee is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note that the meeting is now being recorded and that some committee members and staff are participating by video. All supporting materials that have been provided to members of this body are available on the town's website, website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. Now to go over some ground rules. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover a few rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. First, I will introduce each agenda item. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps to generate accurate meeting minutes. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in conversation with other committee members, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, if, we, if any votes are taken today, any vote taken in this meeting would be conducted by roll call vote. We will now move to the open public forum. We received written correspondence, which was emailed in advance of this meeting in accordance with the posted agenda. If any other participants would like to make comments, they can use the raise hand feature to be called on. I will call on them and they will be provided up to three minutes to provide comments. Please note that a formal public comment period will be open when the plan amendment is posted for formal public comment over the coming week. Following the open forum, I will turn to the next item. And I wanna just note that Adam Chapdelaine is a voting member of this committee. So um, I noted him as a staff, but of course he is also a formal voting member. And uh, actually, I am now admitting a few more people into this meeting, and one of them is our uh, another subcommittee member. Tony? Tony Sacco? It's, I, yeah. Tony? Okay, 
Tony Sacco is present. She is a subcommittee member. So now, uh, if there are any, if anybody would like to speak during open forum, please use the raise hand feature. I will call on you and give you three minutes to provide any comments. Otherwise, we are we have a, an agenda item that needs time to be covered by this committee that we are going to focus on, and then we will close the meeting. So, um, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Okay, I've got a hand. Lynette Martin. Hi, Hello. can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Um, so I, I'm a little bit new to the CDBG funds, but I'm interested uh, considering all this COVID stuff is happening. And um, I tried to read a little bit about it beforehand and I wanted to understand, am I correct that the funds can be used to help cover the cost of rent for um, low income and our housing authority residents during this time of crisis when a lot of people are unable to work and stuff? And is that something that we are looking into? That is something that we will be discussing as part of the agenda item. Yes. Okay. And then there will be an opportunity to comment at the end for questions because I, I might have follow-up questions, but I don't want to use up time now if they're answered during the session. We will not have additional time on the agenda necessarily for that, but I will see where we're at in terms of getting through the main agenda item at this time. I wanted to give this time at the start of the meeting for this purpose. So do you have another question or comment? Um, I just have comments about how we might um, advise residents of this and um, if we could do that in multiple languages and if we could include a sentence if we're going out with information on this about where people could get information about voting in their language. We've already uh, translated that um, in multiple languages and so we have those translations available as a one sentence translation if that would be useful. We also have sentences on you know, if you need help right now with groceries, that sort of thing that's already been translated. So I thought if if uh, flyers were going out to people in affordable housing under their doors that we could use that opportunity to include information for getting them help because that has not happened yet at the housing authority um, buildings. And I feel like going in on six weeks, it would be really good to reach out to that community since they're our most vulnerable. I was hoping we could uh, cross purposes there. Thank you, Lynette. Jenny, if it's okay, I think I just want to make sure that I understand the process and I think it'll be helpful for other people. So yeah. we got notification from the federal government that we've got more money than we expected. And so the planning department has made a recommendation and then the subcommittee of the, this subcommittee is going to list, talk about that and like and take a vote on what our recommendation is. That recommendation goes to uh, the select board. And somewhere in that, and I don't know whether it's between the, the subcommittee and the select board or after the, or during the select board, but there is another formal public comment period for that. Is that, it? Is my review correct? Part of it is accurate, yes. We, um, we were planning to post the plan amendment next week and then bring it to the select board. The public, the plan amendment has to be posted for five days uh, for public comment. And then your select board meeting uh, would be either in late April or in the first one in May, where we would then come back to you um, to discuss those, to discuss um, any comments received from the plan amendment, and then be able to file it with HUD so that we can proceed. But the goal is to, um, and I will get into an outline of this as well as Aaron, by the way, um, who will outline how. This is an expedited process because the goal is to get the money out as soon as possible. Um, and uh, so we can talk about that further. But that is in terms of the public process. That's the process. OK, I just think it. it's I just think it's really helped to be really clear about where in the process the public comment is, because I think that that's I, I, I definitely get, a, you know, there are questions about that. And I think it's helpful to understand that. The goal of that would be when we actually draft the formal plan amendment, we would post it for public comment for a period of five days. And ideally, that would start next week. But we'll see where we're at at the end of this call and our Thank ability you. to do that and file it accordingly. Um, so thank you to Lynette. I'm going to move on to the next hand that was raised, which was Lynette Culverhouse. And I've unmuted you. You have three minutes available to provide any comments. 
Um, thank you for including the public and inviting us to ask questions. I'm also new to this, but one of the things this pandemic has done uh, has sort of woken up in me an awareness of um, our lower income residents and the, the um, low paid workers in town and our service workers who are all struggling right now. And um, I just had a question about um, whether you have representation on this board of people in that community who can actually directly um, express what their needs are. And if not, how are you actually inviting them to have some input um, regarding their needs? Since, since the um, funds, uh, the grant money is earmarked for low, low and moderate income households, um, I'm just uh, really wanting to be sure that they're having input in how that money is being used. Thank you, Lynette. We, we will talk about the public comment period and how we intend to reach out. I don't have information about the subcommittee members and their low or moderate income background, unless they wish to self-report. Um, I am going to move on to the next person who has a comment, and that is Joanne Preston. Oh, actually, I just lost you. Wait a minute. Where'd you go? There you go. Okay, Joanne. <laughs> Thank you. Somehow my, my picture disappeared, but I'm here. Okay. Um, we hear you. Just some quick history. I've been talking with um, our new police chief since February about the dangerous intersection at... Um, Chestnut Street and Medford Street, as many of you know, um, uh, a senior citizen was killed at that intersection. And the outcome of our discussions is we thought that some structural changes as proposed in traffic calming would be um, the most effective way to make that safe for the, especially for the 100 plus senior citizens in Chestnut Manor for whom this is their only way to their church, the stores, the park. Um, so on Monday night, and one of the things I was thinking of having actually attended one of these meetings before is to apply for a block grant. Um, only on Monday night at the select board did I realize that, and I'm sure you were only recently notified of these additional monies. At which point I talked to Chief Flaherty yesterday and I wrote up very quickly a proposal. Um, and I was wondering if that was going to be discussed. The, the, the subcommittee is in receipt of your proposal via email, Joanne. And um, we, um, I will ask the committee of their desire to discuss that after we consider the topics that are outlined in the memo. OK, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Anything else? No. Okay, I'm putting you back on mute. Diane? It's, your audio is um, hard to hear you, I think. Is there something on your phone or something, Diane? Because it's really it's muffled. Uh, Jenny, if you could unmute the number that ends in 338, that's Diane's cell phone. Oh, okay, thank you. All right, Diane. Is that better? Yes. I didn't realize how um, to yourself. No, this is why when we started the select board meetings, um, we had to find a way or whatever, which I have. I forgot to say at the, uh, thank you for everyone for being here. I forgot to say at the beginning of the meeting, I have three family members that are on various medication schedules. So I have to step away at 1030. Um, and if I step away any other time, it's just um, one of one of those three uh, definitely need me. and. Um, I'd just say briefly, and hopefully you won't hear much from me at this meeting, except remarks at the end. I'm just, as a matter of information, going to work with um, our planning director, Jenny Rate and um, our town manager, Adam Chapelaine, whether this appears in April or in May. But Jenny, am I correct that it, it has to happen by May 15th, or has that been extended? May 15th is our program, or is our next program year. That has to happen by May 15th. Um, this actually has to happen as soon as possible. It's an it's an expedited 
funding uh, program because it is coming through the CARES Act and the intention is to get the money out as soon as possible to help those most in need as soon as possible, given the fact that many people are already experiencing the effects and the implications of the, the shutdown um, and other related concerns. We want to get the money out as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. You can mute me again. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, then I am going to close the open forum and I am going to move on to the main agenda item, which is as posted to discuss, oops, sorry, a lot of, a lot of uh, things have to be open on one desktop here. The main agenda item is uh, was outlined in greater detail in a memo provided to the subcommittee by myself and Aaron, which is outlining the process and the timeline to program the CDBG, it's known as CDBG-CV, related to the CARES Act funding, as well as other CDBG funding, which will lead to a, uh, an amendment to an existing program year's annual action plan. I am sorry that I am speaking CDBG speak. I am glad to explain any of these terms or acronyms at any point in time if people have a question. Um, but for the purpose of this, I think most of the members know what I'm talking about. Um, but I will, of course, also uh, let you poke me if you have a question, because I, I might speak a little bit quickly. The CARES Act funding, yes, we were notified very recently of the amount of the allocation that we were going to receive. And then we've also been, it, it's sort of been a slowly unfolding process with HUD representatives based in the Boston office as to how we can utilize the funds, the waiver requirements that are involved, which are different than when we operate our, reg, our regular CDBG program, which is an annual allocation, as you know. Um, so there are waivers to the process. There's prioritization of how to utilize the funds and particularly in, on specific activities. Um, and then there's a, an expedited process for getting to be able to get, to get the money to people as soon as possible. Um, so we received that notification. We provided it to the select board. It was provided directly to Diane as the chair of the select board. Um, and we are, have yet to receive the contract from HUD as to you know, actually spending money. Um, but this is the process that we have to go through before we get that contract regardless, um, which is what we do every year. So um, the, the CARES Act funding, what we've identified and what we're going to talk about in the memo is the opportunity to make, uh, to utilize about $650,000 uh, towards uh, business activities as well as housing activities. Um, we also have some funding that we would like to reprogram from a prior year to address a couple of other things that, um, that could also be something to, that would also help during this time um, and that we want to also talk about. So I think that I'm going to now turn it to Aaron, who will talk about, well, actually, I want to pause for a second. Do any subcommittee members have questions about the memo um, or um, anything that I just said to clarify? I guess um, I have some questions about, like, and you can talk, defer them for later, but like, what's the, um, what's the implementation look like on uh, the actual on the disbursements? Um, do you mean disbursements? Like so, like so. Say say we approve the memo, just basically like you know as written. Like how are the applications going to come in, and how are the payments going to go out, and how are there how are we going to prioritize, and like all that? Is that stuff that you're about to explain, or is that stuff we should talk about now? I will we'll explain that as part okay. of how All right, you then I'll wait. Out. Yeah. There were not, it, it would not mirror the same process that we typically use. Uh, I'll, I'll start there. Anybody else have a question, uh, like a technical one related to anything that I've said? Adam, do you want to add anything? No. Okay. Then I would like to turn it over to Aaron to talk about the memo and start to walk through what we have outlined for this subcommittee. To then discuss. Aaron. Hi. Um, so, as the memo uh, that we provided to the subcommittee and posted as part of the agenda outlines, there are three uh, P, uh, funding sources um, that are under consideration right now. The first one is the funding um, known as CDBGCV, which is the CARES Act funding. 
There's the cancellation of HCA, the Housing Corporation of Arlington Solar Project. And then the third um, piece of funding is old money from previous years that we would like to reprogram. Um, so I'll start off with the first um, piece of money, which is the CDBGCV. Um, we will be receiving $659,903 um, from the federal government, which is about half of our entitlement um, that we get each year. This is uh, the first half of the CARES Act funding. So there could be additional funding that uh, arrives to Arlington in the future, but this is what we've been um, given at this time. So our proposal from the staff is to use it in three ways, um, to provide business assistance to microenterprise. Uh, microenterprises are small businesses of five or fewer employees where the owner makes a low to moderate income. We're also uh, recommending it to be used towards rental assistance. Um, and then we finally would recommend to use it um, towards public services. Um, one of the things that was granted through the CARES Act is a lifting of our public service cap. So as um, the subcommittee is well aware is that we have a specific amount of funding that we're allotted, allowed to use towards public services each year. Um, the great thing about the CARES Act is that it's lifted that cap so we can um, fund uh, uh, more of our public service agencies with additional funds, particularly if they're being responsive to the pandemic crisis. So um, the amounts that we are recommending is 200,000 to business assistance. Um, what that would um, sort of break down to is a grant of up to $10,000 per business. So approximately 20 businesses could be supported. Um, for rental assistance, the requirement of the CDBG funding still stands that rental assistance cannot be um, provided for more than three months. So if we take a conservative uh, number for rent at $4,000, we thought that a um, uh, uh, that would be um, a, a grant of up to $12,000. And with that, we could fund approximately 33 low to moderate income households that need assistance um, making uh, and paying for rent um, for, for their home. And then the, finally, the, the balance is 59,903 which we would recommend um, using to fund our public services, um, not for housing costs, but for other household expenses, food security, mental health counseling, childcare, transportation, and senior services. The process to um, program this funding um, is what Jenny had laid out. It's a substantial or major amendment to our current program year's annual action plan. So that's the July 1st, 2019 to June 30th, 2020 program year. Um, so uh, once we are able to um, put together the documents, um, the, we would take advantage of the waiver that was granted by HUD where the public comment period would be uh, no less than five days. It would have to be noticed in the newspaper um, as uh, typical. Um, and we would have to make that document publicly available. Um, in the uh, environment that we're working within, it would, it would likely be available online. Um, so once that substantial amendment is um, posted and the public comment period is open, we will receive comments. Um, and then close the public um, comment period. At that time, we have to respond to any comments that uh, we've received and incorporate that into a document that then gets forwarded to the select board for their approval within a public hearing setting. Um, the way that we would disperse the funding, um, which was a question that came up uh, just prior to me starting to talk, is, uh, the department would actually run the business assistance um, program. Uh, we would be able to uh, accommodate that um, through our department. 
for the rental assistance, we would consider looking at uh, existing programs that already fund people for rental assistance. And for the public services, I think that would be more towards our traditional um, application process where we would put out an open call to our typical subrecipients, but others, um, other agencies that operate in Arlington that might um, be stepping up to the call to respond to the pandemic um, that could use additional funding. And we would go through the traditional process there. Um, so that's the first piece of money, which is the CDBG CV uh, funds. Um, I'm happy to take questions about that, um, or I can move on to the next two um, pieces of money um, if if it makes sense to take questions at the end. Yeah, let's. Um, Adam's got his hand up, so Aaron, let me let Adam ask a question. Yep. Adam. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Aaron. Aaron, could you just talk a little bit about? Um, the existing agencies that currently provide rental assistance? Are, are you thinking about the Housing Corporation and the Arlington Housing Authority or um, other groups or, or all of the above? Uh, all of the above, um, including our Health and Human Services Department, which has um, an emergency fund that um, provides assistance even beyond housing costs. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I also see uh, Tony raising her physical hand as well. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I, yeah. you know, I, I need to stretch out my uh, camera. Sorry about that. Hey, Tony. Um, so my question was about, uh, so I, I read just in, you know, in the same memo packet, we got a note from Pam Hallett, and, which I'm, and, but in, off, and she mentions offhand that her rental assistance is often 1500 a month. Where, where did, what made us, what, what made the recommendation uh, 4,000 and, and how does that compare to Pam's thoughts around 1,500? So we um, made the recommendation of $4,000 um, per month um, to capture as many um, rental price points as there could be in Arlington, um, even if you're making a low to moderate income. Um, I think that of the funding of up to $12,000 um, would be the maximum. Um, the applicant would uh, would have to document what their rental costs are, and we would support them for three months. The um, CDBG regulations is very strict about three months of rental costs, so we could not exceed what their actual rental costs are. Yeah, I'm, it's not the three months. I understand the three month restriction. Uh, the 4,000 um, was just, it was surprisingly high to me. Um, it is it is on the higher end. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we are um, inclusive of all those households that might qualify. Um, and to your second question about HCA's um, uh, 1500 uh, uh, um, allowance, that is their existing program. Um, they I spoke with Pam Hallett uh, earlier this week and last week about what the requirements are for CDBG funding for rental assistance. Um, she limits it to $1,500 um, because she has a limited fund. Um, so if she uh, is, is to receive additional funding, she would consider um, raising that so that she is uh, supporting households um, at their actual rental costs. Okay. My, I, I'll say that my, uh, I'll, I'll shut up now, Tony, after this. Um, my, la, my thought is, is I would, uh, my instinct is to pick a smaller number and then, and, and make, you know, partial support of people who, uh, where it's appropriate. Um, can, I'm unmute, unmuted. You can, I'm unmuting you, Dan. I have a follow-up question to that, just so I understand. Um, when you say a partial what did you mean by that? A partial. I mean, so if someone actually has a cost of four thousand dollars a month, and the and or if or five or whatever, and they met the requirements, uh, and like I would be more inclined to like that we would and, and we set our limit at like two or three thousand or something like that, then we would pay them the two like we'd we'd pay for part we'd subsidize we'd pay for part of their rent is what I meant. So it's like if you if you, say your income is you know low to moderate and your rental is four thousand a month, and our we write our program limit to be two grand. Then I'd say, okay, we'll pay half. Okay, okay, 
Understood. Thank you. Um, Tony. Thank you. I just have two quick questions. The first one is, um, how does the rental and business supports support other services that are available? And so that way we're um, being careful about not duplicating services, but um, working in partnership with other services that are have become available during these times. And second, what are we doing in terms of rehab rental, but what about low income and moderate income folks who either are struggling to make mortgage payments or who like may own their home, but are struggling to pay their taxes for this year because of similar issues. Aaron, do you want to? Um, so I can uh, start and Jenny, if you have yeah. something to add, please jump in. Um, for uh, the first question um, about duplication of benefits, the, uh, the CDBG regulations are, are very clear that we cannot, um, duplicate benefits. So we have to have a very clear agreement um, with a, a subrecipient and they likewise with the actual household um, that indicates if there is evidence that there is a duplication of benefits such as um, through a private foundation or um, if, if uh, uh, Disaster, other disaster funds become available to the town of Arlington, and that uh, that um, household ha that has benefited from this um, uses basically double, um, du you know, double counts the benefit. They um, would be required to pay it back, um, but that is uh, also partially a self-reporting um, or. A, um, uh, it, it's not, there isn't a strong enforcement um, requirement. It's if, if it, it does become self-reported, then we have to um, uh, figure out a way to request the funds back. Um, for the second question um, to households um, and particular to ownership households, that's not necessarily something that we've it, um, envisioned here um, in the um, Massachusetts legislature, the, um, they are uh, considering a moratorium on evictions and um, mortgage payments. Um, so that is one way that homeowners are going to be supported. Um, and actually the rental assistance um, in the CDBG, uh, there, there isn't necessarily a homeowner equivalent um, of an eligible activity. So. Um, the, this was what we can do within the confines of the regulations. Um, I hope that answers the questions. Was there anything else that I should refer to, Jenny? No, that, that last part covered it. In fact, okay. uh, I was going to add that point. There's not a, it's not an eligible activity, and we also can't pay for taxes or other types of expenses. It's just directly for housing, and in this case, tenant-based rental assistance is the activity. Yep. Are there other questions from the committee about this? Or should we move on? Okay, Diane. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, 371? I Is think it's the 338. 338. Diane? Thank you. Sorry, I thought I hit a clap or a wave, but I guess it's not working. I'll have to think that out. Okay. Um, just on the last question um, from Tony um, regarding property taxes and the like, um, we did. Uh, Dan and I, I usually say Mr. and Ms., but I'm not going to drop that here. Um, with our colleagues on the select board the other night, um, we discussed, which we will continue to discuss at every regularly scheduled board meeting, the different kinds of relief um, that came out from the legislation. And concerning property taxes, um, I think it's Chapter 59, Section 57, um, the board took a vote to um, delay property taxes, and I, I didn't print it out. I want to say till June 30th, uh, the fourth quarter property taxes. And when I finish, maybe if I misquoted anything, if, if Dan, um, you know, has a better memory. And then concerning water and sewer, um, what we did was we said water and sewer um, bills that were due March 10th. So if you didn't stop paying on March 10th, you would incur um, penalties and interest. So what we did was again, chapter. Uh, Again, chapter 59, I think section 59, we also extended that. We waived all water and sewer 
penalties and interest to June 90th. So somebody asked me uh, a question, does that mean I don't have to pay till then? And the legislature and, and government being the way that it is, the correct answer is your, your penalties or an interest are waived until June 30th. And what it says to someone like me, the block of cheese kid, um, as long as, you know, if you can't pay it on March 10th or any day after, if you get it in there by June 30th, you in effect um, have been given a delay. But that's not what they say. They, you know, that's just my interpretation of it. Um, on the $4,000 um, rental, that really like blew me away um, in terms of um, I, where I live, there's three and four bedroom homes and um, my neighbors who charge going market rate are, are like 26 to 3,300. Um, I, I would be in favor of, if we can, I know we're saying low to moderate income, uh, I'd like to say uh, low income, and then look at, um, and this may have already been done, if there's any sort of study, what a low income average rent is, what a low to middle income average rent is. Um, I don't think it's, my thing is I'd like to, um, you know, capture the people. Um, if we can just say it's for low income. Um, if we can't, that's okay. Uh, the, if the other thing I would say is, if we could do a two from range, I'm, I'm afraid that somebody that's barely making it and is paying maybe, you know, seventeen twenty five a month sees four thousand. You know, not understanding how things go, they might misinterpret that that's oh, well, I'm not in that range, so I'm not even going to apply. If there could be sort of a um, a two from range, and then my only other preference, and this is for the planning department for um, Jenny and Erin to iron out. Um, my personal feeling is. Um, I would like these monies to go to people that is paying that that are paying their rent, not to an AHA, H, you know, Housing Corps, um, that um, a director or any nonprofit might say, well, if I can get some more money to help, you know, I'm already making it and I'm, you know, I'm barely keeping things together, but I'm getting it covered for everyone. But if you're telling me that money's available, then give it to me. What I'm trying to say is. Those people in those units, um, they pretty much, it's been worked out how their rent gets collected from what sources, whether it's Section 8, whether it's assistance from the HCA. Um, so I don't know if we can, and I don't know how the rest of the subcommittee feels, as well as onto the select board, um, that these money go to um, people who maybe aren't really getting any assistance at all. And you know what I'm saying? I don't want it to go to, you know, um, a particular housing core says we could be getting 3000 for this. We're only getting 2000 but now there's this program, so give us that 1000 They've already figured out where the 1000 comes from. So thank you, and I, I'll listen for two minutes, and I'm going to step away and do meds real quick. Um, just to quickly respond, the um, HCA uh, program, their homelessness prevention program, is available to any Arlington resident. Um, as is the health and human services program. So I, um, I would agree with you that it shouldn't be limited to the residents that live in those properties. Um, and uh, the points are well taken about the, the range of the rental um, and also uh, thinking about limiting it to um, a certain income, uh, the lower, end, lower side of the income categories. Um, so with that, I'll move on to the second item for discussion um, in the memo and attached um, to the memo was, is a letter from Pam Hallett from HCA. Um, in, for this current year, this current program year, um, this CDBG subcommittee um, and the select board uh, funded a solar um, project uh, in which Pam um, had planned to install solar panels on the roofs of the buildings in at Capitol Square, um, so around 252 Mass Ave. Um, unfortunately, due to the ownership, um, as a way to reduce the costs of her the utility costs of her tenants. Um, unfortunately, due to the ownership model of those buildings, um, they have been unable to negotiate with the um, with their partners, uh, uh, a reasonable um, 
model and agreement for how the solar panels would be owned and operated. Um, as such, um, and being responsive to the pandemic, Pam has requested that the CDBG subcommittee consider um, reallocating those funds um, towards her capital improvement program um, in an amount of 50,000 and 100,000 to support her existing homelessness prevention program, um, which again would have to follow some of the criteria that I outlined um, in the, the first piece of my presentation um, as it relates to the CDBG uh, requirements. Um, so this is, uh, this is a separate um, uh, funding from the CDBGCV um, money. So this is uh, a decision that the CDBG subcommittee could um, uh, decide separately from that funding. Um, I, and also the amounts that uh, would be allocated one way or the other. Um, this, because of the amount of money and actually the cancellation of this project, the solar project, this does trigger a substantial amendment um, and we would plan to bundle this change into the substantial amendment that we would have to prepare for the CDBG CV uh, funds um, because it affects the same program year. Um, so uh, with that, um, uh, I will leave it to questions from the subcommittee. Um, attached to the memo, again, was Pam's request. Are there any questions? from subcommittee members. Do we know what part of our, do you have any sense of what what part of our capital budget should we use it for? Um, so I understand that the additional $50,000 will fund siting at her property at 27 Acton Street and um, uh, a new boiler system at um, 2 Smith Road, I believe is the other address. Um, 27 Acton Street is included in this, in the capital, um, her capital improvement plan for this current year. So it was when she was assessing the building with her contractors, she noticed that the siting um, was in uh, not great shape. Okay. Anything else, Dan? Nope, thanks. Oh, I see Diane's okay. waving. All right, yeah, Diane. Um, Diane? Yes. Um, can you see? I, I don't mean to keep physically waving. Am I hitting the feature that you can see it on the screen or no? No, I see it. The, the hand raised function is not happening. I do see you waving at me, though. Oh, okay. That All right. works um, just as well. And, and I apologize because I ran up right at the beginning of the explanation. So it, if you already covered it, just give me the extremely short answer. Um, am I correct that the allocation um, is 200000 and we're only and I don't mean to say only, and we're anticipating spending 150,000 of it. And if that is correct, um, why not spend the whole 200? The solar project was funded at 150,000. Um, the capital improvement project was funded at 200,000. So the capital improvement program as a result would be increased to 250,000. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Tony, did you? Want to say something? Yeah, I had a quick question, and please forgive my ignorance. The rental assistance, 100K, that would be earmarked for the homelessness prevention program, does that money help pay rent for people that are living at HCA units? It, it is for any Arlington resident to apply. OK, so it's not restricted to people that could be or are living in HCA units. That's correct. The, the eligibility requirements of low to moderate income households would apply, but it's not, it's not limited to only HCA residents. So would the 100, 100K that would be administered through the homelessness prevention program through HCA, that would be in addition to the 400,000 from the CBDG CV funds that could be administered through other agencies? That's correct. Are you all set, Tony? Okay, are there other questions about this? Because we have one, one more section to get through. 
All right, Erin, you want to? All right. Uh, funding from prior program years that we need to repro. I just yes. had a lot of program, but you get it. Anyway, <laughs> reprogramming funding. Um, so uh, from previous program years, so years that um, occurred before the start of this current program year, which it started on July 1st, 2019, there is approximately um, $457,437 available to reprogram. Um, uh, we would recommend um, uh, using this funding to assist two projects that did not receive um, funding um, for the upcoming program year. So starting on July 1st, 2020. And that is um, the fit out of Arlington Eats, the local food pantry and the DPW curb cut. Of course, Arlington Eats um, did submit an application for this, but at the time the subcommittee um, did not feel comfortable supporting it. Um, in the past week, uh, we have um, received some communication from our HUD field office that there will be a favorable decision coming from HUD headquarters related to funding Arlington Eats' fit out project. Um, so we would recommend um, helping them fund that project. Um, the second item is the DPW curb cuts. Historically, this um, an application has always been submitted um, to the CDBG subcommittee. Um, unfortunately, this past year, um, it did not happen for a variety of reasons. However, um, this is something that has been an ongoing effort for the town of Arlington. And um, we would uh, recommend to the CDBG subcommittee that you consider um, funding that curb cut program for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, with uh, these reprogrammed funds. Um, of course, um, the waivers that have been provided right now from HUD for um, uh, uh, shortening um, some of the time periods that we're required to operate in do not apply to these previous program years. So we would have to undertake um, a traditional substantial amendment of our um, upcoming program year's annual action plan. So again, that's starting on July 1st, 2020. Um, and this substantial amendment would be required to follow our, um, the traditional 30 day comment period. Um, so in, it would uh, likely occur um, later this spring um, after the select board approves the upcoming annual action plan um, if that is their determination, um, and after we submit it to HUD on, uh, by May 15th. Um, so I, I, Jenny, I saw Diane waving um, Diane, with the little are, hand. Are you, are you all set? I, I've, um, that's the presentation for this. Okay. All right, Diane? Yes, um, it's not, I, I, I definitely support the um, recommendations on the, 457,000, um, the part that I'm confused about is, I, I know for a long time when I, I've been on the board and this predates our town manager, Adam Chatelain, but it's carried over. Um, because of the painful decisions the CDBG subcommittee has to make and, and then we go through and say, you know, do we eliminate something or do we fairly uh, across the board just to decrease a lot of these programs that go to low, income, um, mostly children, um, but also families. And, and I know I've asked even before um, under Brian Sullivan that the board, just because I had, anyways, I've always asked for a six month report of CDBG to say, are there any funds you know that haven't been spent um, and don't anticipate to be spent? So when we come to these tough decisions, we can kind of factor that in. So I'm just going to tell you my reaction when I saw that, you know, we saw from reprogram funds this close to half a million. And I think of all the pain, you know, I think of when I asked for those six months report and I hear, oh, no, everything's spent and then some. They don't even have enough. Um, I'm a little frustrated that because what this says to me be incorrect mm -hmm. is that, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, when I was asking, are there funds that aren't being used um, or 
reprogrammed um, to see a buildup of 457, almost, you know, $500,000. Um, I want to know what I was doing wrong, that what I was doing wrong, that I wasn't aware every other year when the, in the, the CDBG subcommittee um, that there were funds that could be reprogrammed. My thing is, this must have been built up not over the course of one year, but some years. So I'd right. like to move it forward. Let me, let me, let me um, I'm going to interject here. Um, this is program. This was money that was programmed to help restart the housing rehab program. Um, we programmed it in program year 18 and we put it into that plan. We wrote it up. This was the number that was used with the intention that we were going to try to infiltrate that program with funding so that they could really restart their activities due to a lot of staffing changes, which have continued through this February, uh, we've not been able to, and we don't intend to restart that program at this time, um, which will mean that we will likely have to think about reprogramming, just not to like add more reprogramming to your lives, but the um, we put in a weatherization type activity into the program year 20 plan and at the moment, we would need to talk about how we want to, how we're going to deal with that activity as well. Um, so that that's the original source of where we put the four hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars was to fund and restart the housing, the home improvement loan program, which unfortunately now we are decisively not able to continue that program. Okay. Well, maybe um, going forward, if we could. Um... I really would like, especially a substantial amount like that, um, and where we make these tough decisions and um, when we get back to normal, CDBG may start to go down more and more. I'd like the, at a future subcommittee meeting that we have an agenda item and it'll be a different chair, um, that uh, if we can establish a policy on a certain amount of money, if you do not spend it um, that year of the initial start of the program, so, um, you know, if, if you ask for 200000 you initially spend it and then you stall out for a year, then I understand that. But I'd like the CDBG subcommittee that I will not be on, um, unless I'm on as, an, you know, as Dan is right now, um, just have that discussion about, um, you know, if you don't spend that one year up to a certain amount and you haven't got, pardon my language, your act together, um, then we are able to, at that six month review or the very next meeting, we're gonna allocate that to someone else that's up and running and ready to go. And, and maybe it's a certain limit of money. So, but that's for a future CDBG subcommittee meeting. We're not gonna solve that now. And I don't want, I wanna say I'm thrilled that we're able to do this because the Arlington Eats really left me with such a bit of taste. And I think planning, you know, Aaron and Jenny for, um, I, I don't even wanna say making it H-A-P-P-E-N because I, will, I always wait till it happens. So thank you so much. You're welcome. And that, that's a really great suggestion for future subcommittee meetings and possibly even uh, thinking about how we rewrite that into some of our plans and policies. Um, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I really appreciate the comments. Uh, Dan has had his hand up. Here yeah, it was, it was very similar. My question was going to be, where did we reprogram the money from? And, and, I, and I guess uh, you answered that. I um, am, I was surprised that we had that much unprogrammed. I thought I had a good mental map of what our um, unspent programmed money was uh, because I've watched those balances in the past and this one caught me by surprise and that one, um, I, so I agree that we, we should be we should we, we should be more um, aggressive about even if it's just like an annual review of saying okay these are the ones we have out there waiting. Um, it's all just, just to be very clear, it is programmed, but, but currently it's programmed as being funding for the home improvement loan program. That, so, I, I, I'm sorry, that's what I'm um, sorry. Programmed but unspent. But unspent I thought I knew yeah. where that all was, and yeah. uh, clearly I didn't. I understand, and um, this. This relates back to staffing changes and uh, some capacity. And I am glad to provide any further answers about that if needed. We are at approaching 11 a.m. I think at least one or two of you might have to drop off. Is that correct? Or can you all stay on? I can stick around for a few minutes for sure. Okay. Yeah, just, 
yeah, just a few minutes. Okay. And I originally so, needed to drop off, but I can stay for a few more minutes now. Okay. So why All don't right. we talk about then? Thank you. Why don't we talk about the next steps? What we want to do right now, moving forward, because what what we intend to do was take your feedback, pull together the you know focused on the CDBG CV right now, which is uh, the the first two sections of the memo that we um, that Aaron outlined. We've got some great um, amendments to what we've recommended and proposals. Would anybody like to entertain a recommendation for how to move forward and so that we can then productively use the time to prepare that amendment, post it, receive any public comments, and come back to the select board? Dan? Uh, I move that we go forward with the recommendation with an accept with um, with an amendment of a rental limit of two thousand dollars, and uh, ask the planning department to move forward with those plans. So we have a motion from Dan Dunn. Is there anybody who would like to second that motion? Um, Diane, are you seconding? Second. Yes, I'm seconding that motion. And then I'll have a question later. So then oh, we have, actually, okay, I'm, go ahead. If, uh, my question would be to you, uh, Jenny, and also to my colleague, um, Mr. Dan, Dan um, why aren't we doing all three? Um, if, if we can, I understand there's a lot of work to be done and we need to get it done, but um, why aren't we doing the third piece of it? Uh, Dan, do you wanna, or is this uh, a for me uh, I'm, I'm happy to amend it. Say, sorry, thank you, Diane, uh, for clarifying. I had heard the two is urgent and the third is not waiting, but you're absolutely right. Uh, I'm, I'm remake my motion is um, uh, move forward on all three with the amendment I suggested. Second. And we've got a second from Diane. If you could unmute yourself, then I'm going to call a roll call vote. So, Adam Chapdelaine. Aye. 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 Um, Tony Secco. Tony. I, but I have some questions about the curb out. The, the what? The, the curb cuts, the DPW curb cuts. Okay. We, so, um, we are in the middle of voting. So, uh, why don't you ask your question? Dan, do you have uh, something to related to this? No, no, I'm, uh, I am agree. Let's question? answer the questions before we vote. Totally okay, go right. forward. So, um, question, Tony? Yeah, I'm just looking for some more information on that. Um, what are they and why are we not funded in the past? Did they just oh. not submit an application? And I mean, it's just because we're switching, we're reprogramming money that comes from housing improvements for folks who are low and moderate income and shifting that money into curb cuts. So they feel like very different program for guys. Aaron, uh, I, Aaron outlined that um, we had every year, usually it's filed, it was filed in the past by the ADA coordinator um, who also ran the home improvement loan program. This year that, that individual retired. And um, unfortunately we, we didn't have anything filed. Usually we, we do and unfortunately that was um, not the case this particular year. It has been a program that's been funded, I would say, for at least the last decade, if not more than that. Um, yes. That historically, CDBG funds are used for this, and they supplement a town capital appropriation, um, as well as you know probably other funding that comes in from Chapter 90 um, and other resources, so that we can comprehensively address curb cut updates. We have a map that looks like we could do this for the next 10 to 20 years to continually update curb cuts. Um, we, we do need to talk about the geography of where those curb cuts might be happening. Um, a couple of years ago, we focused on Sunnyside neighborhood, um, and there might be something like that proposed as well. Aaron, um, do you want to add anything to this? Do you mind if I throw in some, Jenny? Oh, yes, please. Sorry. So just this stretches back even to, when, to for me, back to when I was on finance committee, which is indeed more than a decade ago, and we just had this, like, absolutely immense list of ADA non-compliant curbs and the, the cost on it was was like it was just more than we could fathom at any given year 
And so at the time we started um, putting in 50K a year and it was both from the capital budget and from CDBG. And as uh, funds have become available and as we've made progress, we've, we've ratcheted it up a little bit. And indeed the prioritization comes through the Disability Commission and the uh, DPW. Um, and it is just like, it's one of those things where the problem is so big, uh, we just knock off a chunk of it every year. And, and uh, uh, yeah. So um, we actually earlier, uh, or yesterday, the days blend, as you know, um, we received an email from Joanne Preston with regard to an intersection um, of concern and a suggestion about um, how to utilize these funds. I wanted to actually turn it to Adam quickly just to talk about that because it Thank somewhat you. relates to the curb cut conversation. And Joanne has her hand up right now. I'm going to lower your hand, Joanne, because we are actually in the middle of a vote and clarifying something. So I'm gonna lower your hand, and if we have time available, I'll come back to you. Adam. Thank you, Jenny. Um, and, I, and I wanna thank Joanne for submitting that proposal this morning uh, for the committee to be able to take a look at. Um, that was clearly a tragic loss with the accident uh, that occurred uh, several months ago at that intersection. So after receiving Joanne's proposal, I had a conversation with both uh, Police Chief Flaherty as well as with Jenny before today's meeting. And Chief Flaherty suggested to me that uh, what she thinks the most immediate thing that could be done to begin to address concerns at that intersection uh, is, to have our, uh, is to have DPW restrike the crosswalks there. Uh, so we will uh, immediately work with them to, to repaint uh, those crosswalks. Beyond that, in conformance with uh, our normal transportation planning process, what we would recommend that uh, this committee give consideration is that we forward Joanne's concerns to the Transportation Advisory Committee uh, so that they can study the concerns of this intersection in coordination with the senior transportation planner working out of Jenny's office as well as with the traffic officer uh, working out of the police department and the town engineer. Uh, come up with a set of recommendations for either improvements that could be made to the intersection internally or uh, recommend that we should be hiring a designer to do a broader redesign of the intersection. Based on tax recommendation, we could then potentially seek either capital planning monies or CDBG monies for either consultant fees or uh, potential implementation of um, design recommendations that would come from, again, either a consultant or a tax itself. Thank you, Adam. Uh, Dan, you want to ask a follow-up question or? Um... Yeah, no, I just want to chime in and agree. So when I read Joanne's uh, email this morning, I definitely agreed. Like my first reaction was TAC, the Transportation Advisory Committee, and DPW is the exact right place to tackle that. We shouldn't do that kind of prioritization here with the CDBG. We should let the transportation experts prioritize their things. And then when the, whatever comes to the top of the list, that's what we should try to do at the CDBG. And my only amendment to what Adam suggested is that I would actually really prefer that Diane and I put that on the select board agenda to refer to TAC because technically all referrals to TAC should really come through the select board, not directly from subcommittees. Though in this case, I'm certain that the select board is going to agree. Okay, um, so this was, this, oh, Adam, anything more? Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. I, I didn't mean to suggest we could direct refer. Thank you. Uh, Diane? How's that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, just for the record, I'm going to take the correspondence from Joanne Preston um, sent to the CDBG subcommittee on Wednesday, April 15, 2020. I'm going to forward it to the select board office, um, ask them to officially receive it, and it will appear on our next regularly scheduled meeting, which I believe is April 27th. Um, is that all right with you, Dan? Thank you. All right, thank you, Diane. Um, so I'm gonna go back to Tony, who had the original question, which prom prompted this conversation. So, um, Tony, are you all set? I'm, I'm um, thank you for answering my questions and I feel comfortable voting with an eye on Dan's um, proposal with the amendment that he recommended. I would like to continue then the roll call vote, if I could, which is where we stopped for a Jenny, moment. Jenny, can I suggest that you restart the roll call? 
Restart. Okay. Um, so, and I want to acknowledge that Joanne has her hand up, but um, so I, so I'm going to start restart the roll call vote, which means I need, how about we just do a new motion <laughs> and a second and then move to the vote. I move that we, uh, that we uh, recommend approval of the three uh, seg re uh, the three segments of the memo with the adjustment of the first segment be changed to $2,000 limit and uh, advise and direct the planning department to move forward uh, with the programs and the recommendation to the select board. And we do we have that was made by Dan Dunn. Do we have a second? Diane Mahan is providing a second with her fingers and I'm for some reason, unable to mute, unmute her. I'm sorry. Um, and then I'd like to continue with the roll call vote from Chris Christopher Potter. Aye. Adam Chapdelaine. Aye. Sarah Lee. Aye. Tony Sacco. Aye. All right. Um, so thank you all. I think I did. Uh, I, I think you, Dan. You, yeah. Aye. Uh, all in favor. It's a silent eye. There's, there's a silent eye happening. Okay. We're good, right? That was a full, that was an official roll call vote. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for all of the comments and questions. If it's okay with uh, like the two minutes of time left, I'm going to acknowledge Joanne's got her hand up. We did discuss her, her matter. Joanne, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, and please. Oh, thank you. Um, I've I put a lot of study into this because <clears throat> as a town meeting member um, for Precinct 9, that's a, an intersection that many of my neighbors also use. We've always thought of it as being very dangerous. Um, then this woman was killed. I went to the police chief and we've been working and talking regularly about this. Um, and I also studied um, what went on in other towns. TAC is a very different entity than traffic calming. You will notice in Belmont, there are two different programs because what TAC does is it looks at regulatory measures, stop signs, speed limits, et cetera. Traffic calming looks at how to restructure an area that does not take police regulation, but slows traffic and protects pedestrians. I also know that TAC, having followed their meetings, they're very busy. It'll take them a very long time to get to this. Meanwhile, we have this very dangerous intersection. When I was sitting, standing there at the, um, during the primaries, right near the place where the woman was killed, I tried to reassure people that the town would do something. And I kept getting cries like, yeah, it's going to take a couple of years. Um, so I, I really would prefer that this not be put in the queue for TAC, which is going to take a very long, they have so many people who want stop signs, speed limits, and so forth. Um, and, and leave it with, for instance, the police and DPW um, and the engine, of course, the engineering department to look at. I know the engineering department has already has a, um, has a, uh, a drawing of what they thought they might do, but it doesn't include the, the measures that are now used in traffic calming. I'm sure they would welcome an expert to talk to them about it. Anyway, I, I just feel that this woman's life should not be in vain, that we should really move on this. It's more critical than curb cuts for the next year. And if it takes a year or two, three, four, to do anything about that intersection, it's really a tragedy. The problem is the, the driver was going the speed limit. Sure. At the Joanne, moment. I'm going to ask you to I, okay. I hope respectfully uh, if you can wrap up so we can we have to move on and I want to be able to uh, let anybody respond if they wish to
So, uh, Jenny, I, I would just add that um, I agree that uh, there is an urgency to this matter. I, I don't dismiss that at all. Uh, but I, I, I do want to state that uh, Ms. Preston is inaccurate in her description of TAC. Uh, they are far more than a body that just makes recommendations in regards to uh, regulatory matters regarding traffic. Uh, they, they, over the years, have done really amazing work for this town. They're an all-volunteer body uh, with experts who volunteer their time uh, to try to to try to help with redesign. Sometimes regulatory, they certainly do do their share of stop sign and yield sign and crosswalk placement work, but uh, they've also done some um, much more significant and larger projects in town. So I, I do think TAC is the right body. And I think with the select board taking a vote on this at their next meeting, they can describe the urgency to TAC and ask that they prioritize this work uh, and, and, and do it in a faster manner than what um, what some of their other work might have taken, you know, or how long their work might have taken in other instances. Okay, thank you, Adam. If I, um, I, if we are at 11.15, which is about 15 minutes after our posted amount of time. I am um, just looking to the group if there's anything further that you would like to discuss. Um, we are at the close of the meeting. We are going to be, that's Diane. Let me get you off here on mute, unmute you. It's appropriate, can I make a, I'm sorry. If it's appropriate, can I make a motion to adjourn? Please do, yes. So move. Second. Second. Seconded by Dan Dunn. Somebody else beat me. Sure, I need a roll call vote for this. So Adam Chapdelaine. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Sarah Lee. Aye. Tony Sacco. Aye. Christopher Potter. Aye. And then all in favor of departing the meeting. Aye. 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 So thank you all, everybody, and thanks to those who participated. If we could not get to your comment or you have additional things that you would like to send us um, in reference to what we talked about today or anything else related to the Community Development Block Grant Program, please email myself or Aaron Zwerko uh, through the Planning and Community Development Office. We look forward to continuing the conversation soon, and we'll be in touch. Thank you all. Chris, I feel like...